Hi, Leanne, can you hear me? Hi Jodie, can you hear me? Oh great, you can. Okay, that's fine. Hi Linda. So I'm going to wait for a few minutes just to let a few more people jump in. Hi Charmaine. Hi Ellen. And... Um, then I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. So what's everybody been doing? How are you all keeping? Um, for anybody that's still in lockdown, are you coping? Hi, Nancy. Thanks, Leanne. Hi, N.A. Hi Janine, Nancy you're working at the same time, <laughs> Patty H snowing, oh dear, snowing in Indiana, oh my lord, uh, Lisa good morning everyone from Illinois, hi Barbara, Charlotte Keller, so far so good. Good. Are you managing to keep keep busy? What are you all up to? What have you been doing? Is anybody crafting? Lots of people seem to have been taken to cooking. Hi Yvonne. Wow, we've got 30 people on already. Linda's saying, coping well because I've been using your tutorials to make things. Oh, great. Yeah, well, I've been, you know, pottering and making as well. I've made a few more cards today that I've put on my Instagram. <laughs> They'll never know, Nancy. What, that you're watching when you should be working? Oh, dear. Don't want to get you fired. Hi, Laura. Um, what's Leanne saying? Any tips on removing stamps from carrier sheets that have become stuck? Mm. Is it the stamping up ones, Leanne? You know, with the, the red rubber ones with the really sticky back or I'm not sure what you mean. Patty's crafting. Hi, Carol from Phoenix. Charmaine, you're doing a lot of sewing. Was it you, Charmaine, that was doing the masks? Uh, Jodie, you're still going to work, but crafting when you can, great. Hi, Alan. Hi, Marcia from Iowa. I'm trying to read. Charlotte's saying, I've been reviewing my crafting stuff so much and playing with the scan and cut. Brilliant. You've been looking to this, looking forward to this morning, Caroline Gray. I've just got hired, so don't think so. Oh, that's good if you've just been hired. Hi, Claudia from Brazil. Good afternoon. Um, with silicone. Alter new. Oh, is that meant to mean alter new silicone? Um, no, I don't know. How have, how have they got stuck, Leanne? Have you got something on them or? Hi, Lynn from Costa Blanca. Hi, Chris from Hindley Green. 
Uh, Linda saying, just had some wonderful news. Our friend Angela is home from hospital after three weeks of the virus. Oh, brilliant. Well done. Uh, what's Charmaine saying? I have only made masks for myself and for my son, who is a plumber, and still working on emergencies. Oh, dear. Hi, Helen in Oregon. Yeah, it is awesome news, that, isn't it, Marcia? Oh, you used to work for them before, Nancy, so they've brought you back. Well, that's great. Right, what time is it? Are we, um, I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing. So just give me one minute. Hi, Linda Lee. Marge is saying, I was made for isolation, just loving it, catching up on you guys and getting to finally use my scan and cut. We are on school holidays, so enjoying the rest. Good on you, Mar Marge. Is it Margie? Linda saying, I've been using the X and Y and Snap to Grid after watching your video. So clear and is it brilliant? Yeah, the Snap to Grid is something I don't use very often. I tend to use it if I'm making boxes and things but yeah it is it is good to have hi Barbara from Cumbria right can you see my screen can you see the shapes on my screen Yes, fab. Okay, that's always a good start. Phew. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. All these shapes that you can see on the screen, oh, everyone's saying yes now, great. There was a horrible silence for a minute and I, <laughs> I thought you'd all gone and now you're all saying yes, so that's good. Okay, all, by the way, we're going to be, I'm going to be using Canvas Workspace online for this no real reason it's just the one I tend to lean to more than the download I think somebody asked me that the other day so all these projects that you can see here all these shapes you can see here are all made using borders that are in canvas workspace Lisa Davis thank you so I'm going to jump in even this circular one so I'm going to jump in to Canvas online and show you how you can make them. So the things that I'm going to be using, the functions that I'm going to be using the most tonight, apart from maybe sizing or resizing, it's going to be weld and subtract. Lynn, I tend, somebody asked me the other day, I tend to use the online more, I tend to always just gravitate to going online. But since we had the text to path function, which is only available in the download, obviously I've been doing quite a bit of, you know, shapes on paths recently. So I've been using the computer-based version, the download version. But in the main, you know, if I'm starting a project, like, you know, I was starting this to show Everybody tonight, I tend to just go to online. Hi, Alison. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to Canvas for Web. And you should now be able to see my blank Canvas workspace online screen. Lynn, you're saying that you tend to use the online version more? Yeah, I think it's probably because we've had it the longest, isn't it? And it's, you get used to what you know, you know where things are. 
Right, I'm going to jump in. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to the borders. Debbie, you've not missed anything. I'm literally just starting. I am using Canvas Workspace online and I'm going to be showing you how to make shapes or use the borders in different ways. So I'm going to come to the borders. Uh, Christine is saying, isn't Canvas PC a one-stop shop, does everything more than the web? It does everything, <clears throat> it does everything that the web can do and a little bit more. So it's it's personal preference, really. You know, there are some things that I will always just go back to using Canvas Workspace online. And there are other things that I can only do in the download program. So then I will use the download program. So in your, down, in your borders, I'm going to scroll down. And the first one I'm going to bring on is this flower border. OK. Wendy, Margaret, you're welcome. Hi. So you can see the border here on my page and if you look down here you should be able to see that th this particular border has come in at 11.42 inches wide and it's just over an inch high. Now by default they all come in, all these borders will come in at a similar width and it's generally always around about 11, 11 and a half, something like that. So in its simplest form what I'm going to do is just create a square with one of these borders welded to each of the four sides. And then I'm gonna take it a step further and a step further again. Tracy, I wish the online version had the layers panel as well, but I have no idea why, so. Okay, so with this selected, I'm going to right click and create a duplicate, or you can come to edit, and this icon here under cut, copy and paste, the one on the end is also duplicate. So you've got options. I tend to use the right click, the shortcuts, but that's just me. I'm going to hit this back arrow and I'm going to come to the basic shapes and I'm going to bring a square on. Now we know that this border is 11.42 inches wide. So I'm going to size this square accordingly. So with the square selected, wrong one, I'm going to come to the properties box and in the first box I'm just going to make it 11.42 and because I've got maintain aspect ratio ticked it will adjust the width and height accordingly when I hit enter. So I've now got this square. Now you don't have to do this but what I'm going to do, I'm going to colour it in the hope that you, you're going to see it better on the screen. So I'm going to come to the properties box with the square selected and this first box here is the colour fill and I'm just going to make it like a nice bright pink. And then the borders I'm going to, oops, I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to colour the borders in black just in the hope that when I start putting this all together on the screen, you'll see better what I'm doing. So I'm literally just selecting the border and using the fill and colouring it in. So I've got four borders and a square. I'm going to bring the square just so it overlaps, sorry, I'm going to bring the border just so it overlaps the square. Now it's gone behind, so with the border selected, I'm going to right click and bring it to the front. And then I can see where it overlaps. It depends which way you want to do it. I'm going to get my next border, just scroll down, bring this border down here, and then holding the shift key down, I'm going to right 
rotate it and attach that one. And again, I can leave it behind or send it to the front. I might leave it behind actually. This one's moved now because I've got my screen quite small in the hope that you can see it. And then these two, I'm going to put one on one side and one on the other. So again, with it selected, I'll bring it to the front. I'll catch up with your comments in a minute. I'm going to hold the shift key down on my keyboard, which is the one, um, if you're not sure what the shift is, on a Mac, it's the single upward facing arrow that's to the left of the letter A. I'm going to rotate that and bring it down and then I'm going to do the same with this one and then I'm going to shrink my screen let me just make sure you can still see me you can can't you so I'm just going to bring all this up here and then what I'm going to do I'm just going to bring these side ones out of the way I'm going to somewhere up here in the in the blank space, I'm going to left click and just drag a line through these three elements and I'm going to go to edit and align center. So they've now all centered together. And then I'm going to bring the two left and right ones over so that they overlap this square. And I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to click out here somewhere to the right in an empty space and just drag like an imaginary line through. And it will just select these three. Because I've not touched the top or the bottom border, it's not selecting them. It's just selecting the two vertical borders and the square. And I'm going to do the same. Edit and center on the vertical. So now I'm going to drag an imaginary box around everything and I'm going to go to edit and weld. And if they're all overlapped properly, it will change to a solid color and everything is welded together. So let me just shrink that down so it fits on the mat and then let me bring this up. So now you can see I've got four borders that were just simple border designs from here. And have been able to make them into like a matting layer, a decorative matting layer. I'll catch up with your comments in a minute. Now this you could use for a scrapbook page. You could make it smaller by dragging a corner down and use it as a card front. But one thing I would say, and that's gonna, this is going to lead me on to the next part. If you make something with these borders at the full width and then you go to shrink them down just be careful because you'll be condensing like a lot of the nodes and they may not cut you know brilliantly but for scrapbook layouts or if you was doing say maybe an 8 by 8 card and you wanted to put something like this on the front of a card then I would think you would get a decent cut if you took it just to eight by eight. You could try it, take it, taking it smaller, but just be mindful. Right, let me catch up with what you're saying and then I'll go on to the next stage. So Lynn's saying better the devil you know, but does hang a lot, I find, to close down. Okay, so you have problems with the online version. I tend not to, but you know, you never know. Linda's saying, if you coloured the border before you duplicated it, it would have been... Yes, you're right, it would have been. I just forgot, to be honest. Okay, so we're with this so far. Now, you could make this into a frame. So let's go back to the basic shapes. And in fact, I'm going to duplicate it. So with it selected, I'm going to right click and say duplicate. And I'm just going to put the duplicate off the page for now and just work on the one that you can see, which is on my mat. And if you come back to the basic shapes, if you wanted to make this into a frame, 
bring another square onto the mat. I'm going again, I'm going to colour it. You don't have to, I'm hoping that you'll just see it better. <coughs> now I'm going to just position this square roughly where you know by eye where I think I've got a decent frame size if you like and then I'm going to drag this out then I'm going to just left click off the page and select both of these items I'm going to come to edit I'm going to align them centrally on the horizontal and edit and align them centrally on the vertical <coughs> Wendy's saying, I'm so glad you are doing something simple as I have less of an idea on canvas than the scan and cut. Which borders have you used for that? Christine, I've used, gone into the borders, scroll down and I've used this border here in pink, the one underneath the grass, okay? So with both of these selected now, um, the square I've coloured in, in the hope that you can see it, and it also shows that the square is on top of the black layer, and it has to be for the next process. Okay, so I'm going to select both of these, and then I'm going to come to edit, and this time I'm going to come to the process overlap, and I'm going to use the last icon, which is subtract. And when I hit that, I've now got a frame. Hi, Suzanne. Is everybody with that so far? I'll just wait for you all to, to catch up. Leanne saying yes. Marcy is saying yes. Okay. Okay, I'm getting lots of yeses. So, in its simplest form, I'll change this to a different colour else it's going to get confusing. So, in its simplest form, the orange one was just four borders welded to a square. Yes, Charlotte, the top layer is what has to be on top to subtract. Rose Lily, it works on an iPad, but I find it clunky, but you can try it. Okay, I'm getting lots of thumbs up. Lynn Gaskell saying not getting anyone else's comments except my own. Maybe refresh Lingaskell or go out and come back in. But it will be recorded, so if, you know, you can watch it later. Okay, so the orange version, four borders welded to a square. The black version, four borders welded to a square with a smaller square put on top and then use subtract. Now, what you could do, I'm going to just shrink these down just to give me a bit more space on the screen. But let's say you wanted to use this as a layer for a scrapbook and you wanted to put some photographs behind. You could, I'm going to duplicate this and move it off to the side. And I'll fill this with orange and then... No, I'll fill it with pink. So I'm working on the pink one, okay? If we come back to the basic shapes and we choose a square and then we bring on a circle, I'm going to fill the circle and the square with green. I'm only filling them so that you can see them better on the screen. So now, if we select the pink shape and the two green shapes 
and do edit, subtract, it will punch the two shapes out of this base layer. So you could use this on a scrapbook page and you could put a photograph behind it and a photograph here and then add some embellishments. Everybody with that so far? So that's three ways just from using basic borders and a basic square. Just going to have a quick drink while I'm waiting for you all to reply. So Alan, you're saying, yes, been trying to keep up on my laptop with canvas but I will run the lesson again later when I can keep pausing and doing the same okay it's all right because basically Alan I'm using weld and subtract tonight and I'm going to move on to something else again in a minute and then hopefully the more you see it the more you'll understand everybody's saying yes I'm getting lots of yeses so I'm going to shrink this one down and I'm just going to put these off to the side for now and here's the original one yep getting lots of yeses okay now I'm just going to go back to the borders and I'm going to bring in the same flower border. Now, if you wanted to make something smaller, yes, Charmaine, subtract is like, think of subtract as using a punch. So let's say you had a circular punch and a piece of card. You put the circular punch, you, sorry, you put the piece of card into the punch and you punch the circle out effectively that is subtract. You're subtracting the shape from the piece of card. Okay, so let's say you want to use this border, but you want to keep the flowers this size. And as I said to you before, when these borders come on, they come on at about 11 and a half inches. And in this particular design, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So each one of these like flower shapes is probably just under two inches if you do the maths. Now you might want to keep the flower that size but you might want to use it on a smaller shape okay so let's go back to the basic shapes and let's bring a square on and I'll make the square six inches so I'm going to go to edit no I'm not I'm going to go to properties and in the size, I'm going to type six, and I've now got a six inch square. If you select this border and shrink it down to six inches or thereabouts to fit your square, obviously your flowers have gone a lot smaller and you might not want that. So I'm going to show you how to use a section of a border. So I want three flowers at this full size. I'm going to bring on, I'll bring on a rectangle and I'm going to fill this rectangle with a colour just so that you can see it. So I want these three flowers here because I know each one of these flowers is just under two inches or thereabouts and I'm going to put them on a six inch square. So I'm going to get this rectangle and I'm going to position it over the border and I'm going to drag it out until I'm hiding the parts that I don't want. Hi Judy. So I just want to use these three flowers that are here showing on the left and I've got my rectangle hiding the rest of my flowers. I'm going to select both of these objects and because the rectangle is on top I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to subtract and that has 
effectively chopped away the rest of this border. So now my border is just under six inches and I'm just going to leave it at that even though I'm using an exact six inch square and I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to do like was it Leanne said earlier and I'm going to colour it in first use this kind of salmon pink colour and I'm quickly going to make the same design and then I'm going to move on to something else but I'm showing you instead of making this design that I made earlier and shrinking it I'm sticking with the integrity of this flower shape on the border but I've made it so that I'm only using part of it so what we're saying so I've got a, a wow from Caroline and I've got I know that's clever and Barbara Harty and a ha moment okay so I'm going to duplicate this border again I'm going to right click this time and I'm just going to get myself four Again, I'm going to select one, I'm going to hold the shift key down and flip it and position it over this rectangle. I'm going to bring another one down over the top. Then I'm going to rotate this one to the right. And all I'm doing is holding the shift key down and using the circle that's on the top. And by holding the shift key down, it rotates your shape so it always stays perfectly straight if that makes sense, rather than going, you know, skew width. I'm going to position that one, and then I'm going to get this one, hold my shift key down, rotate, bring it over here. And then, obviously, when you've got more time, you can, you know, align them up better. But, hi, Chris. Um, <clears throat> but for now, so again, I'm going to left click out here in an empty space on the page and just drag an imaginary line through this border, the square and this border. I'm going to get to edit and I'm going to align them so they all align together. Then I'm going to left click away and select these three items. So this border, the square and this border and then I'm going to go to edit and align those together. And now I can left click and drag everything and go to edit and weld. And you can see, if I bring the other one in, I've got the same kind of result, but with less flowers. But what I've done, as I say, is I've maintained the integrity of the size of the flower rather than making it with the full length and then shrinking it down as I did earlier. So let me just shrink that down out of the way, bring that one back and then I'll catch up with what you're saying. So Wendy is saying, yes, thank you. I will watch it tomorrow on my iPad and then can work on my laptop with your help. I have actually stamped and cut out on my machine. Brilliant. Kerry is saying hi. I've only recently come across your channel. I've binge watched your videos over the last few days. Can't wait to try out my new scan and cut if it ever arrives. Delivery was delayed. Oh no, Where, where's it coming from, Kerry? And then Jill is saying, is it the shift key on both a PC and a Mac? I think it is. It's the single facing upward arrow which I think is on my Mac, it's online with the row that has the Z key and it's just a single arrow on its own. It's not the one that you use to put your capitals on and off, if that makes sense. But if Paul or anybody on here who uses Windows knows, then somebody will tell you. Christine saying if you can use the heart border it's a little trick. If you can 
use the heart border. It's a little trick. Christine, I'm not sure what you're saying. Um, Leanne is saying you would have to have a mouse to be able to hold the shift down. Is that right? No, I don't think so. The shift key is a key on your keyboard. So if you're using a laptop on your mouse pad, you've got a left and a right, haven't you, side? And you just click the left side while holding the shift key down, I'm sure. Darla is saying so glad you found the channel. Thank you, you're welcome. So Caroline, I'm using a Mac, but this will all work on Windows. So that is the same principle, but making our border smaller by using subtract. And again, you could do the same things. You could put, oh, use the heart border, it's tricky. Okay, I'll have a look in a few minutes. So again, if you wanted to make this a frame or you wanted to put this on the front of a card, this size now because I've added the borders if you remember this the square was six by six you know you could shrink this one down comfortably I would think to fit on the front of a six by six card you might want to put a scallop shape in the middle so again I'll fill the scallop just with black in the hope that you can see it better on the screen so long as the shape you want to punch out of your background layer is on top, it will always work. If you drag an imaginary box around both, do edit align center on the horizontal and edit align center on the vertical and then do edit subtract. That will punch your shape out again. Let me see what Alan's saying. Um, Wendy's saying, does the canvas work on any machine? Yeah, I'm in Canvas online, Wendy. And because it's online, you can use it on anything. You can use it on an iPad. You can use it on a laptop. You can use it on a desktop. You can use it on Windows or Mac because you're using the program online. I don't like using it on an iPad. I just find it very clunky. So I never use an iPad with mine. Alan Green is saying that's because they aren't lined up across the bottom, Christine, I think. Yeah, we'll have a look in a minute. Pete Tisdell is saying shift and touchpad works too on laptops. Yeah, I thought it did. Thank you, Pete Tisdale. Chris Halifax is saying the shift key is next to the Z on a PC. Okay, yeah, well, mine's next but one on a Mac. I think that most keyboards are laid out, you know, very similar. Okay, so that's another way of using it. Now let's just try the heart for Leanne because then I want to show you something else. So let's go back to the borders. Was it Leanne or was it Christine, sorry, who asked for the border? Okay, so let's bring a border on. So your borders, I know what you're saying, they're an irregular shape, but you can still use them. So do you want me to use them as it is, at its full size, or do you want me to chop it down and make it smaller like I did with this flower? Whoever it was, if you can just answer me that question, I'll do that. I'll just have a quick drink while I'm waiting. So Alan Green's saying next but one on a PC. Okay, so on the PC, it's in the same place as my Mac keyboard. Leanne's saying tried with a mouse much better. Yeah, I prefer a mouse, even on a laptop. On a laptop, it's on both sides. Is it? Okay. Well, try it. Try either one and see if it works. I just, I'm right-handed, so I tend to always you know, go to the left and that's where the key is on my Mac keyboard. So Christine's saying I choose. Okay, so what we'll do, let's see, let's have a look at it and see. So if you look at the design, they're kind of in twos, aren't they? You've got the big heart, the small heart, 
then a big heart and a slightly smaller. Let's see if we can... In fact, we'll leave it. What I'll do, I know what I'll do. I'll leave it as it is, but I'll shrink it down so that the height is an inch or thereabouts, if you can see at the bottom. Or if I go to properties, I'll make it an inch high. So I've shrunk it down using the right hand corner by dragging it in. And then with it selected, I went to properties and whatever the size was here, I've just made it an inch in height. So again, what we'll do instead of using a square, we'll use a rectangle. So we'll go to basic shapes and we'll drag a rectangle on. This is now 7.06 wide, so I'll make this the same. So I'll come select the rectangle, come to the properties box, I'll come to the width and I'll make it 7.06. And then you can position it and I see what you mean. So what you could do, in fact, let's, let's colour it in. Use a nice purple and we'll colour the box in a pale colour in the hope that it will show up better. Let me bring the border to the front. So I'm selecting the border and then doing a right click and going bring to front and now it will overlap the pink rectangle. So what you could do, you could either position the hearts so that you get some form of an overlap. Or if I duplicate it, right click and duplicate and then twist it round and let's see if they line up any better that way. See, it might be better doing it that way. The bottoms seem to line up a bit better. So I'll select all three. I'll go to edit, align center I look as though I've got a similar overlap of the purple hearts on the top as they have on the bottom. I'll select both and I'll go to edit and weld. And I've now got that. Let me see what you're saying. Caroline is saying, can you do it from the middle? What do you mean, Caroline? And Barbara, I'm not sure what you mean. Heart times five is repeat on this. So Christine, is, is that okay? Does that help? Now, if you want the hearts on the side, let's undo. I'll select one and right click and make a duplicate. And let's see how many we'd need for the side. There are five hearts in the pattern. With you, okay, yeah, I'm with you. Well, yes, I didn't even spot that. So, Kerry, let me catch up with what you're saying. Kerry Clark is saying, I bought mine from Create and Craft due to COVID-19 delivery was delayed. Then the Easter holidays put it back even. Oh, I see what you're saying. It will be straight out of the box and set up as soon as it arrives. I will have fun. Alan Green saying, count from the left and there are five hearts. Yeah, okay, I'm with it now, yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can. Let's bring a rectangle on. And we'll do what you're saying. Count five from the left. So one, two, three, four, five. So if I put that... Let me bring these down. 
If I put my rectangle over that fifth heart, and again, I'm just going to colour it in in the hope that you're seeing it better on the screen. So you can see that this turquoise rectangle is hiding everything I don't want. Select both of these and go edit, subtract. And we've now got the five hearts, but we've got a little bit of a, an odd thing going on where I did the divide. So let me bring it up. Let me select these and bring these down. And let me bring this in and I'm just going to zoom in and see if I can do anything with this odd bit that's going on on the end. So if I click it twice to expose the nodes, I can see I've got extra nodes up here. This line I can see is highlighted in turquoise, so I'm going to hit the minus where it says delete points here and see if I can get rid of them. Let me just undo that because I've got rid of that shape now. So basically it's just this little bit I want to get rid of here. So if I can bring it down, it's just a node that's kind of stuck up at a funny angle. Let me see what I've got. It's not going to be perfect, this, because you'd need more time to play with it, but I'm just kind of just adjusting that corner. That looks okay, actually. It doesn't look too bad. So now, let me go back... To the screen and back to these. So I've got this now so I'm going to right click and create a duplicate. I'm going to hold my shift key down. Five isn't enough but we'll do, we'll, we'll do it like this for now. I may have needed to carry the pattern on a bit more but this will do for now. You'll get the idea. I'm going to select this small border, the rectangle and this small border, just by left clicking and holding my mouse and dragging across these three. And I'm going to go to edit and is it that one? No, undo, wrong one. So it's edit and it's this one, align on the vertical. And now I'm going to select everything and go to edit and weld. So I've now got that. Obviously, if you want the hearts to cover the whole sides, you'll just need to break them apart a bit further along. Right, what's people saying? Marge is saying, sorry guys, I'm going to bed. It's after three here in Australia. Oh no, we'll watch tomorrow. Well, yes, have a good night's sleep, Margie. Leanne saying, clever, you are clever, great work live oh my god you are awesome okay christine thank you if you take the last heart in the row subtract and then weld it on you will have a nice ending yeah anything now you know the principles of welding and subtracting you can play around with these yourselves lynn's saying happy accident looks like an ornate picture frame well yeah you could Again, let's do it. Bring a rectangle in, position it on top. Let me fill it with grey or something, lilac. Let's drag it out and drag it down. Select both. Go to edit, align on the horizontal and align on the vertical. And because the lilac rectangle is on top of the purple. We go to edit, subtract, and we've made a frame.
So is everybody with that so far before I show you the last one? Because the last one I think is pretty amazing. I'm just going to have a quick drink. I'm going to shrink that one down and put it over there out of the way. Caroline's saying yes, getting yes from Lynn. Those nodes are brilliant to ena enable manipulation. Yes, they are. Alan Green, it's only a poor man's opinion, but it was better in the first place. Keep all the hearts. Well, let's do it then. Let's go undo. I'll make a duplicate of that one and I'll make a frame with that one. There you go, so we've got two. So, so long as you've not saved up here, you can keep going back and undoing. Once you save into Canvas, then you can't undo anything. So I am actually just going to save this for now in case I want to take screenshots of any of these and use them. And then if it crashes because I've got so much on, at least I've got some of the work saved. Everyone seems to be saying yes. Rose Lily saying, love your tutorials. Gave up on using my machine, but since I've discovered your tutorials, I think I will try to get... Please do. I've got lots, and especially if you watch the Sunday Night Lives, which are always recorded, Rose, I actually show you how to make things in those, and, you know, that might help as well. Jodie's saying yes. Caroline's saying you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Right, so, so, so far, all as we've used are basic shapes and borders and we've used edit and subtract and we've made all this. I'm going to colour this one a little bit of a different colour because it's just like driving me mad because it's the same colour. Okay, so now I'm going to come back to the borders and I'm going to bring on the bow. Now again, if I bring the bow border on, it consists of three bows and you can see it's 11.42 inches. So again, each one of these is probably just under four inches, three point something or other. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the basic shapes. Excuse me. I'm going to colour my bows in red so you can see them and I've got a rectangle which I am going to colour in pink. I'm going to position this rectangle. I'm looking at the distance I've got here on like the bow where it's joining to the next one compared to this one here if that makes sense and I'm just doing it by eye. It's not vital but just to give you an idea and then again, I'm going to drag out the rectangle to hide the bits I don't want. This is the only bit I want. I'm going to select both. I'm going to go edit and subtract. And now I've just got this one. Now, I'm going to make a duplicate because there's a couple of things I want to do with this. So first of all, I can see that this, this is now just under four inches. So I'm going to bring a rectangle on. I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to drag it out till it's about four inches wide. Or I could resize it perfectly. That's not bad, is it? And then I'm going to stretch it down. I'm going to make it, let's make it six or thereabouts. So now I'm going to position the bow. When you 
one thing I forgot to say, when you're welding, it doesn't matter. It like it, I want to weld this bow to the top of this rectangle. When you're welding, it doesn't matter whether the bow is on top or underneath. It's only vital when you're using the subtract, when you're punching something out, that the subtract shape has to be on top. Okay, so again, I'm going to choose both of these and I'm going to go to edit and center because I want the bow in the middle of the rectangle. And I can see it's overlapping. I'm going to select both and go edit and weld. So now I've made a kind of a tag or you could use it for anything. Again, let's color it so that you can see it running out of colors to choose. So now we've got this. So that's just something simple. This would make a nice tag for a, a gift or you could put a circle in it and make it like a bottle tag, you know, like Paul did for the um, design team project. So let's make a duplicate. Let's find a circle. Size the circle down to about two inches. Put the circle on top. I'll fill the circle with white in the hope that you can just see it better. Select both of these and do edit, subtract. So I've now got, you can see through, so I've got a kind of a tag and I've got what could possibly be used as something to go over a bottle if you were giving as a gift. Okay, how are we doing? Alan Green saying we're going to need more memory on our computer. <laughs> well, the beauty of this is we're using Canvas online, so all this will be stored online, Alan, unless you physically download it. So, you know, save your, put all your shapes together on one map and save it in Canvas and then just download it as you need it. So what's everybody thinking so far? Just using basic shapes, borders, resizing, welding and subtracting. And then I've got one more thing to show you. And then I think we'll wind up. Oh, that was my arm that cracked then, if anybody heard that. Just have a quick drink. Okay, I'm seeing the comments coming through again now. So Barbara's saying brill, Linda Fawcett's saying really good, Wendy very cool, learning a lot, Leanne brilliant, Nancy love it. Simple but powerful, definitely. You could use these for anything. You know, I'm showing you the techniques. You don't have to make cards with these. You don't have to make tags or scrapbook layouts. I'm just showing you the techniques so that you can come up with your own ideas and then at least you'll know how to do something. Jill saying you've given me so many ideas thank you you're welcome that's all I'm trying to do I'm not you know I'm I am predominantly a card maker but you know that doesn't mean to say that the principles or the techniques I show you can't be used in you know any other you know craft that you do <laughs> Debbie man ouch sounded painful <laughs> it was my elbow <laughs> Uh, Pat Riley saying you make everything look so easy, learning a great deal, many thanks, you're welcome. Things are easy when you know how to do it, aren't they? It's, you know, it's the same with anything. Uh, Lynn saying you're a great teacher, very clear. Oh, lovely, thank you. Barbara saying could do another head on and weld, then you have a card. Yes, I think I, I, think I know what you mean. Do you mean... Create another one of these. Let's select both, edit, let's align them up on the bottom edge. That looks as, in fact, I'll change the colour of this one so you can see what I'm doing. I'll make it orange. 
select both of these, line them up on the bottom edge and let's do edit and weld. And then we've made a card, yeah. Then we could come to the path icon, select the path icon, left click, hold the shift key down. I'm not clicking anything on my mouse, I'm just dragging it down in a straight line. Double click to anchor it, go to edit, no, it's not. I always get this wrong. Oh, I've just... I want the... Let me send that to the back. I want my dash line and it's not going to be easy to get hold of now. Right, let me undo and start again. Right, so I've got the two shapes welded together. Path icon. Left click, drag my line down, holding my shift key to keep the line straight. Double click to anchor it. Properties box, cut line, choose a dash line. And we've now got a card. Select both, group. We've got a card now that would fold in half. Charmaine saying, Yes, Linda, as I say, you don't need to save them on separate mats. I would drag all these into here so they all fit onto here and just save them all in one go. And then you can just, you know, use them as and when you want them. Right, what else is people saying? I'm missing comments. Great idea to save all together. Charmaine saying learning so much. Barbara saying learning a lot also. Alison saying forget cooking and cleaning. I'm creating. Brilliant. Could also do... Bow to bow shape. Yeah, anything, Barbara. Yeah, this is definitely when the layers come in handy, Charlotte, when you can just hide layers and select. Yeah, the layers would, would be perfect for something like that. Alan Green, you're saying, I am on the Canvas PC version. Can I have an on? Yes. Just go to the online here, canvasworkspace.brother.com and create a free account. You just need to put in, I think it's a username and a password or an email and a password, I can't remember. That's, that's all you do. And then you can save everything online. Debbie, that's fine. I'm just going to do one last thing and then I'm going. So I'm coming back to this bow. So you can see that this bow is about four inches wide. I'm going to make it smaller. I make it about two and a half inches. I'm going to right click and create a duplicate and I'm going to rotate the duplicate by using the shift key. I'm going to bring on a circle and just for this particular process I'm going to leave the circle as it is the size it comes on which is just under four inches. I'm going to bring my bow down and line it up just over the circle and do the same with this one and I'm going to select everything and I'm, I'm going to get rid of the circle in a minute I'm just using it as a guide. So I've got everything selected and I'm going to go to edit and align them all centrally. So I know now that this top bow and this bow are aligned together. And now I'm going to get rid of the circle. I'm going to select both of these and make them a group. So right click and make them a group. Or you can go to edit and group here. Now, on a Mac keyboard, At the middle of the bottom of my keyboard, I've got the big space bar. And then to the left of that, I've got a, a button that says Command. Yours might say Control if it's Windows. And then to the left of that, I've got a button that says Option. So on a Mac, it's Option. But on Windows, it's the Alt key. So if anybody's got a keyboard handy, and you can tell us where the Alt key is, 
It should have ALT on it. It'll be on your keyboard somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Guy, you're welcome. Christine, thank you. Christine, yes, I try to if I can. While we've been in lockdown, six o'clock on a Wednesday and five on a Sunday, both UK time. Right, so Leon say next to the space bar, next to the space bar. Okay, so on a Mac, it's your option key and it says option on your keyboard. On a Windows computer, it's your alt key. So I've got the two bows lined up together and they're a group and I'm going to press my option key. You would do your alt key and just holding the key down, either the option or the alt, whichever one you're using, I'm now going to come up here where this little circle is on top of this bow and you can see this arrow appears and I'm going to drag out. I'm not creating a duplicate, it does it automatically and then if I let go of everything, just by pressing the option or the alt key down with something selected, it will enable you to move and duplicate at the same time. So now I've got three sets of bows. I'm going to drag an imaginary box around everything and go to edit and weld and have now made a circular bow frame from what started off as a bow border. So yeah, bless, you're a blessing to stay sane through this time. Thanks. Well, Caroline, that is why I decided to do these. I have done, you know, YouTube lives in the past going back years. And I posted to say, as we were all in lockdown, did people want me to start doing lives? And everybody said yes. So I started doing the Sunday night one, which is where I generally make something either you know, a project that's in Canvas or a show you how to do something. And then obviously people were asking me questions how to do things and that's how come the Wednesday nights one came about. So the Wednesday night ones tend to be using the software and the Sunday night ones tend to be projects. So what are you all thinking of this that I've done so far? I've got a wow from Leanne, thank you. Oh, that's a new one on me. Thank you. So you have to have the circle first to get it to it. No, you don't. I was just using the circle as a guide to space out the two bows, if that makes sense. Because by putting them, putting a circle on the screen first and positioning the bow at the top and the bottom, I know when I'm using the alt or the option key and dragging them out, they're kind of going to be in the same places. Lisa's saying great new skill. The only time I have used alt is to get the manager up. Okay, well, you, another way of using it now. Dina, amazing. I've learned so much from you. Thank you. Wow, I have so much to learn. Thank you. You're welcome, Rose. So let me get rid of that. Oops. Now, again, with things like this, you can put offset layers on them. So with this selected, if I go to edit and offset, and I say create an offset line around the outer edge only and use an outward and make it say 0 0.12 and OK. I've made like a matting layer. So let me colour this in a different colour. It looks like a rainbow, doesn't it, my screen now with all these different colours. So I'll make that purple. I'll bring this to the front. So right click, bring to front. And then you've got your own matting layer. Again, you could select this and make it bigger. Now, one thing with online canvas, if you want to resize 
more than one thing at the same time, you've got to make it a group. Whereas in the PC version, you could select both like this and you'd be able to drag it out and make it bigger. You can't in online. So I've got two items selected. I'm going to right click and make them a group. Now I get the dots so I can make it bigger. What's everybody saying? Um, Suzanne is saying you must be a mind reader it was just what I could use thank you beautiful great we'll be able to make excellent yeah definitely but again you could put this on the front of a card you can make whatever you want great we'll be able um, I love your videos thank you wonderful instruct oh thank you TC's paper blessings so these are a group now because I grouped them to make them you know size in proportion I'm just going to make them smaller to fit back on my page and I'm going to ungroup them. So we've made all of this all from borders and simple shapes and resize, weld and subtract. Alan Green, chuffing hell, this is so good, my head hurts. <laughs> Darla, I'm feeling very inspired to use Scan and Cut Canvas now, thank you. You're welcome. Just play, just bring the shapes on and play. Literally, we've used basic shapes that are already there. You've not had to buy anything, you've not had to download anything from an internet anywhere and try and get it into canvas it's all there and all as we've used is weld subtract and resize and look what we've made you know and again with any of these you could add offsets Yeah, easel cards, anything. As I say, I'm just showing you the functions and then you can, you know, make whatever you want. Barbara's saying, fantastic lesson. You are a star. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you, Leanne. Christine, which technique? How did I learn what technique? Caroline's saying, I'll need prayers. I need my machine to come. It'll arrive soon enough. Don't worry. And then you'll be able to get, get going with it. Nancy, you're welcome. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. So has anybody got any questions before I go? Because it's 10 past seven and I'm mindful that I'm keeping you all for more than an hour. Christine, you're welcome. Thank you. Kerry's saying, wow, that's pretty. We've got 68 people on here tonight. That's amazing. Thank you. Barbara's saying you're a great teacher. The last one. How did I learn that? Te um, just playing, Christine. I knew how to do the subtract to make, you know, like a single shape. And just started playing with shapes. And I think I came across the alt trick by accident. I think I was thinking I was making a duplicate using a, a, short, a keyboard shortcut and it ended up being the alt or the option key. I think that's how I came across that bit. But just playing, that's how I've learned to do all this. I just played. I am really completely mostly self-taught. I used to be a member of a scrapbooking forum and when I had a craft robo and there was somebody on there that if I needed to know how to do something at that time we used Inkscape and she was great at Inkscape so she taught me or showed me how to do a few things and then I just played so literally all self-taught. Um, Linda Fawcett saying thank you Ashley see you Sunday yes lovely thank you Linda Lee thank you so very much you're welcome Laura saying thank you thank you again keep the videos coming I will do TC paper blessings don't worry Charmaine saying thank you so much now I need time to create yes you do
So if you're on YouTube, please give me thumbs up. And if anybody else has got any questions, I'll wait for a few minutes. And then if not, I'm going to say good night and go and get something to eat and a drink. Janine saying thank you very much. You're welcome. Rose Lily, which of your tutorials do you suggest for beginners? Rose, on my channel, if you go to playlists, there's a beginner playlist. So have a look at that or look at some of the Sunday night lives. They all say live and you'll just have to, they all have a date. Just look which are the Sundays and then because in those I actually make something, you know, I actually sit and cut something and that might help as well. Caroline's giving me hearts, that's lovely. Lynn Gaskell, thanks for a wonderful instructive hour, you're welcome. Charlotte's saying, I suspect there's a lot of what if playing on your part. Definitely, I just try things and if it doesn't work, I just hit the undo button. Jane, you're welcome, thank you. Pamela, thank you. Leanne, good night. Yes, and stay safe. You too. So now I'm just going to bring all these onto this mat. Make sure they all fit within this red dotted bounding box. And I've already given them a name, shapes, and I'm going to save them into Canvas Online. And say OK. So when I now go back up here to Canvas Workspace and go to My Projects, they're in here all together. And you can see here are the ones that I showed you at the beginning that I was making. Christine, yes, take care. Suzanne is saying I'm on vacation this week, so it's been great to be with you and experience your lives. Are oh, you welcome? But they're always recorded, so you can always catch up. Charlotte. Keller is saying thank you yet again. Nina, great video. Thank you. You're welcome. Rose Lily, thank you. My undo button is sometimes nearly whinging my machine. <laughs> I use the undo button a lot. Don't worry about it. Oh, that was my arm again. Okay, any more questions before I go? Okay, I can't see anything coming through, so I'm going to say good night. Stay safe, everybody, and I'll see you on Sunday. If anybody's got anything particular they want me to do on Sunday, send me a message and I'll see if I can do it. If not, I'll come up with something again myself. I can see the last few comments coming through. Still in lockdown in New York, so this will be great to play. Oh, well, stay safe, Linda. Dina, I'll watch this again and try it all out. You're welcome, thank you. Thanks again, Lynn. Oh, Cherie, don't worry. It's all recorded. You can watch it all. I've been using Canvas Workspace online and I've been using basic shapes and I've made all this lot. All from basic shapes. Loads of different things, Cherie. So hopefully you'll catch up with it all. Don't worry, it's fine. Right, I'm going to go now, everybody. Bye. Oh, 4 a.m. Oh, well, you should be asleep.